Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 49, Doing the Confidence Work. So all month we've been talking about creating change, embracing change and looking at what can get in the way of doing that. Because making room for change, like we talked about last week, means letting go of the old version of yourself. At least those parts, again, that no longer work for you, have held you back, have been in the way of you really being your authentic self, like we've talked about, your insides matching your outsides. Okay, so a lot of empowerment is about self-confidence. And I believe that self-confidence is that blend of being your authentic self, using your gifts, living out your passions, living your values and what you believe in and what you believe in about yourself, along with taking a lot of personal responsibility for being that person, the best that you can be, not perfectly, but the best you can be on a given day. So in other words, in order to feel like we can put ourselves out into the world in a wonderful, vulnerable way, we need to like who we are bringing to the table. So you're probably going to have to convince yourself first, right? That you deserve good things, that you deserve just to live your life as fully as you can, and to really put yourself out there and risk rejection, like we've talked about, risk hurting other people's feelings, risk not people pleasing anymore, because not everyone's going to like it or agree with you, and taking that risk and really climbing out of that box we've been talking about that has kept you oh so safe, but not so happy, right? Okay, so before we get all into this today, I just want to check in with everyone, see how you are faring being in lockdown for one more week, how you're taking care of yourself, and are you finding some silver linings to all of this? Maybe time to get things done that you couldn't before, time to appreciate some things, maybe getting outside more than you normally would, and seeing the caring in other people. That's what I love to see. I love to see how creative people get. I think it's pretty fabulous. Okay, so who we bring to the table. So we need to like them first. Now, there should be unconditional love there, And also some loving accountability for ourselves if there are some things we're not so proud of. And typically, behaviors we're not so proud of, things that get in our way. So are you happy with who you are? Because if not, it's going to be way too hard to put yourself out there and just to be genuine. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at some of that. And I'm going to offer you some fun and maybe some profound and challenging practices that you can put in place for the first time, put back in place, or tweak what you have going on. The whole idea here is, what are the small steps that we can take every day, every week, every weekend to boost our confidence and get grounded? All right. So the place I usually start with anything in personal growth is boundaries, right? How are your boundaries? Where are you in your boundary work? And of course, for those of you who haven't listened to the boundary episodes, I would encourage you to go back and do that just to familiarize yourself. But when I say boundary work, I mean the whole shebang. And there's a lot of moving parts to boundary work. It's a huge paradigm and a huge paradigm shift. So be nice to yourself if you're not where you want to be, but just, you know, do a self-assessment. It's like, where am I in my boundary work? Do I need to do a little bit of work on that? Have I fallen off the horse? I need to get back on. So what are some things you've been working on? And give yourself credit for that as well. What are you improving? What feels really good about that? 
And what are you practicing? So some of the things I think of when I think of boundary work is, first off, what are you getting rid of? It is spring, right? Spring cleaning. Like some of your old distorted beliefs that were not necessarily based in reality. Like, I can't do that. That'll never work. Other people won't want to see me do that. So about you, about life, about others, about possibilities, where are your beliefs? And what have you been tossing out the window or really working on getting rid of? And some, some are more stubborn than others, and that's okay. We know that ones that were imprinted early on in our life and had a lot of emotion attached to them, they're going to be the hardest to disprove. So if you're working on that, take it on as a fun challenge, experiment like we've talked about, see what you can do with that, okay? All right. Are you getting rid of habits that hold you back? Ones like clutter, chaos, disorganization, lack of planning. These are all boundary issues. It's about accepting the reality that if I clean up before I start the next thing, it's going to be so much easier and I'm going to be able to find what I need. If I take time to plan every week, not to the nth degree, not to paralysis, but just to plan a little bit, I am facing the reality, right, that there is a finite amount of hours in a given day for all of us. It makes sense to decide, choose ahead of time how I'd like to spend my time because a lot of people get tripped up where other people say, okay, let's go do this. And you're like, yeah, sure. Forgetting that you had promised yourself you were going to do some things for yourself today kind of thing as an example. So we need to be intentional, right? We doesn't mean we're not spontaneous. We're not open to being asked to do something fun for an hour. We try to curate a blend of both on a given day. So where's your planning? What are some things you have walked away from or you are in process of walking away? Like toxic people, right? Those people in your life who tend to manipulate guilt, verbally abuse, neglect, suck you into their drama. Those are people that we've talked about that cannot support you being your authentic self because being our authentic selves, being open and vulnerable is risky. And we need to do that around safe people. Toxic people don't love themselves enough to support you. They can't do it. I don't care what kind of lip service they try to pay you. They can't do it. And you'll see that. And you've seen that. So who are you walking away from? Are you walking away from environments that don't support your highest good? And these don't have to be toxic people. They just might be the wrong environment for you, especially as you're changing and growing. As we grow, remember, we outgrow. And that's a good thing we're supposed to. So what environments don't support your highest good? Are you walking away from negativity? And some of that is your own negativity. When you focus too much on others and make them your higher power, when you give them too much power over your happiness, when you're so focused on fixing them and what's going on with them that you're neglecting yourself. Where's your martyrdom factor going on here? How are you doing with that? Have you climbed down from the cross? We cannot neglect ourselves and be authentic. We can't. We lose who we are. We've talked about that. And that is daily vigilance for those of you where you have a tendency to do that without realizing it. That's the whole point. You don't realize it because you're not focused within. So any kind of grounding work you can do every day will really help you be more aware of that. And some accountability around you too. Okay, and finally, have you been walking away from chaos? Maybe even your own. The disorganization, the procrastination, lack of planning that we talked about a moment ago, boy, does that fuel chaos for us. Trying to put way too much on our plate. Again, that's a lack of boundaries, right? Because if I'm doing that, I'm pretty much saying I don't like reality. (laughs) I want to do whatever the hell I want to do. I get more than 24 hours a day. Thank you very much. I'm superhuman. I don't need to sleep and rest and take care of myself. I can get it all done. What about chaos in terms of people you're trying to change, situations you're trying to change, 
relationships you're trying to basically get some control of because it's too heartbreaking to imagine the truth that maybe these people just don't want what you want. They can't do it. Walking away from chaos sometimes just means dropping the rope for a while. Don't worry. I'll let you go pick that thing up if you decide to later, right? Pick it up and keep tugging on it and tugging on it. If you drop the rope, there's no more tug of war. That person's still holding the rope, but your end just fell to the ground. It changes everything. When we're tugging on that rope, we're trying to control things that we can't usually. Sometimes we need to stand up for ourselves. But then we need to realize, okay, is this worth it or not? Okay. So the next thing, what are you embracing? And you don't have to do this perfectly. Life is long in that regard, like we've talked about. Are you embracing self-care? And self-care means a lot of different things. Rest and time for you, nurturing, time alone, time for play, time to get shit done, because that is a big part of self-care. You know, when we don't take care of our business, we're not taking care of ourselves. And people who usually aren't taking care of themselves are usually acting out or they're taking care of everyone else and they back burner their own needs. Are you embracing quiet time to get grounded? Time where you're not taking in a whole bunch of information like we've talked about. Your subconscious needs that so it can put some things together. Are you embracing quiet time to get creative? And creativity can take a billion different forms. My hope is that across these episodes, you have begun to see the creative aspects of yourself and really, really living them out. Have you been embracing quiet time to get peaceful? You know, sometimes it's just really physiological. We need a break from the stress. We need balance. You know, our, our brain's supposed to be in the green zone more than the red zone. And so we need to be conscious of that and be mindful. And here come the boundaries again, make time for. Sometimes you've got to schedule it if you're really busy. Make it a habit. Start doing it for a couple weeks and see how that feels. Okay, are you embracing meditation and or prayer? And it's whatever feels comfortable and right for you. Some people like guided meditation, mindful meditation, transcendental meditation. Some people combine that with prayer. If you believe in a higher being, whatever works for you is what I encourage. Some people add some yoga or some other form of practice into that as well. Are you embracing time to just play, just to goof off, be silly? laugh, kick back, play a game with someone, take a nap, do something for fun. Play is anything that has nothing to do with any work getting done. Nothing really gets accomplished, but we need it so badly, especially right now. We need a balance right now to all the stress and all the worry and all the news input. Okay, so what are you embracing? And you can add other things to this list, My hope is that this just gets you thinking today. Okay, so it really comes down to practice, 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 daily practice, practice throughout the day, get back on the horse, even by Thursday, if you need to, every bit that you do will help. Every little bit that you do adds up. I always encourage people, first things first, start with your boundaries, take a moment, ask yourself, how am I feeling because that's usually an indicator of a boundary issue. How am I doing? How am I practicing my boundaries every day, all day, with other people, with myself, right? Self-discipline, those are those internal boundaries. Do I say no to myself and say, nope, I want to get this done first, then I'll go play. This means saying no to your compulsions. Deeply rooted compulsive behavior is all fear-based. It is a knee-jerk reaction. These are hard to change, but not impossible. What I want you to focus on instead is your focus, your choice. What would I rather do instead of react this way? What would I rather do 
instead of beating myself up when I make a mistake? What would I rather choose? Maybe some self-love, maybe telling myself, I know you want that ice cream, but that's not your friend. Maybe you delay your reactions to you really need to. I love this. You can tell yourself, look, I will jump in and do something or say something if something catches on fire. But do I really need to say anything right now? You know what I can do? I cannot say something and then see what happens. You give yourself an out. You have a choice. You can always jump in if you want to. I want you to just practice not saying anything and watch what happens. Detachment is a big chunk of boundary work. Where am I detaching today? Am I detaching today? What am I attached to? And what I mean by that is what kind of outcomes am I secretly plotting and planning to happen? What kind of outcomes am I freaked out to think that I can't handle if they happen that way? Where is my detachment from other people's thoughts, feelings, choices, and behaviors? And then let myself grieve. Because if you detach, remember, that's going to allow some grief work to come. And that's okay. When we're not detached, we're compulsively controlling, we ain't feeling nothing, except for maybe anger and frustration at the other person or the situation outside of ourselves. So where is my healthy detachment? That is something again, all through the day, you can fall off the horse, you can get right back on, and it's all good. Do the who owns what in your mind. That's about them. That's not about me. That's not my shit, not my caca. I have no power over that whatsoever. How do I focus on me again today, right now? You have enough to focus on within yourself. You have no business trying to put everyone else's stuff on your plate, remember? The other thing that I think is really, really important to do as we go along in this does really help to build self-confidence. You know, we can't do all this work in our head, right? We have to do it out there. So experiment and gather evidence. Experiment and gather evidence, right? We need healthy mirroring from other people. And what I mean by that is feedback, how they see us, how they see our abilities, our personality, our character, our behavior, what's special about us, what they love about us, what they need from us, what we need from them. As we interact, hopefully we're getting better and better at connecting more profoundly, more vulnerably, and seeing the benefits of that. So what I love about this experimentation is you just kind of notice as you go and you tweak one little thing here and you smile a little bit more today and tomorrow you have better eye contact and the next day you're gentler with others that you love. You're not as snappy and anxious and distracted. These are just examples. And sometimes you're going to get loving feedback, which deep down we're terrified maybe of that happening. And that's why shame is what we keep out of the conversation and out of the room. We're afraid that that's going to be enough to turn someone away and they'll abandon us. What we need to learn is loving people will give us loving feedback because they care. It's not to shame us. It's not to push us away. And some of those things are going to hurt, but they're often true and you'll know because they'll kick you in the gut. You're like, yep, I do that and I don't like it. Healthy detachment is really, really important to practice during this time because you have to tell yourself, okay, I don't think that person was just setting out to hurt me. It makes sense that they're upset because I yelled at them. Let's say I really want to work on my yelling. I'm not connecting with anyone when I'm yelling anyway. I'm just self-protecting. What am I doing? So as an example, detaching from the other person and seeing how Okay, it makes sense that that hurt their feelings when I did that. It makes sense that I'm negative all the time and that's a turn off, that kind of thing. We have to do self and other distinction. That way we can start owning. Okay, that feedback hurt, but a year from now, I'm going to be grateful they told me that because that thing was hurting me anyway. Remember boundary work. I mean, sometimes when you have to detach and let other people face consequences, they need to do that anyway. That's hurting their life. And we love them enough to want them to fall down and skin their knee today so they can get up and walk right later. 
All right. Experiment and gather evidence on things that you like about you as well. And things that you're really proud of secretly, but maybe you're afraid to say that. And I mean, even if others aren't, I want you to start noticing things that you're proud of, small wins that you have. My gosh, getting through the day and being self-disciplined and feeling good about that. Getting through the day, being more mindful and peaceful and not, not watching the news, right? Getting through the day with less anxiety. Getting through the day where you put yourself out there and it was great. All those things, I want you to practice acknowledging those for yourself. Tell yourself, I'm really proud of me today. Doesn't mean I'm all the way there yet. Doesn't have to, but this is how I get there. All right. So there's another way that you can practice really loving yourself and getting things straight with yourself. This usually overwhelms clients when I present it. They're, they look at me like, yeah, right. Like I'm going to do that. So I just want to preface that you can be wherever you need to be. But if you have resistance to this, I expect that. I think we all would. And that's okay. Your resistance is expected. It doesn't have to keep you from doing it. In fact, the overwhelm that can come up in your chest as you imagine doing this or when you start doing it, because I know you will, is actually you gathering the courage to face something that maybe you think you can't, but we know that's not true. These are what I call letters to me, letters to myself. So what's recommended is you do these for quite a while. Don't just do one. Do them till you become more comfortable doing them. Do you actually, like my one client said, you actually look forward to doing them eventually. In the morning, at the end of the day, whenever you have a moment where you can gather and regroup, when you're not as distracted and buzzing with information and things to do. Get a piece of paper. Please try not to type this. Try to write. At the top of the page, write today's date. Then write dear and then your name. Like I would say, dear Mary. That's very important. Don't leave that part out. Dear Mary. So there's four sections that I encourage. Do what you want. Do what feels right for you. But my first section, if I were to be doing this this morning, I would say, Dear Mary, I am so proud of you. And I would go on to say, as if I were speaking to Mary, I would say, I'm so proud of how you acted yesterday. Look what you accomplished so far. See how far you've come. Big or little, just acknowledge what you're proud of. Maybe you're just even proud of having the balls to even do this exercise, right? That counts. All right, so you would do that, and you can write as much as you want to write. Could be four sentences, could be three paragraphs. You'll know when that part is complete, and it's time to move on. Okay, you ready? The next section is, I am so sorry. Now, this could cover the gamut to past hurts, that other people hurt you, something that happened last night something that someone did to you, something that you blew up, right? You Maybe you forgot to do something or you really made a, a big mistake and you're really struggling. I am so sorry. Or maybe just something you're dealing with that's no one's fault. You're still having to walk through it. I am so sorry. Okay, so you're finished with that. You don't have to go down the big rabbit hole that you're a victim hanging on the cross. I just want you to keep it to what's real. Don't embellish it. Don't write 16 paragraphs on this section, okay? All right. The next one is, and I forgive you for. Now, this could be a bunch of different things. I forgive you for making that mistake yesterday. I forgive you for eating that ice cream you said you wouldn't. I forgive you for not being ready to face things you need to face for not wanting to look in the mirror, for not wanting to do this exercise. I forgive you. It's okay. Tell yourself why you forgive. Say it's hard. This is hard. If this were easy, it would be easy and we would have done differently. It's okay. This is not condoning bad behavior. This is I forgive you because you're human and you struggle like anyone else. This is where you call it. 
This is not where you rationalize really bad behavior that you don't want to look at. This is not co-signing your denial or anyone else's. Hopefully in the previous section, the I'm so sorry, you covered all of that, okay? Okay, so finally, we will work on, and what who I mean by we is you and yourself, like me and Mary, Mary and I, rather. Mary and I will work on, we're going to work on maybe changing some things, looking at things differently, starting new behaviors, working on getting rid of other ones, working on healthy detachment, maybe doing the grief work, you know, coming to acceptance around some things. I mean, we got to do that all day long. If you're a grown up, you are faced with reality all day long that you either medicate your way out of dealing with or you work through it. We will work on, we will work on being more connected, more grounded. We will work on embracing more of ourself, whatever you want to work on. That's it. You just sign your name. Now, like I said, the first couple times you do this might be really emotional. And it's okay to cry through the whole thing. Male or female, you may still cry through the whole thing. And that is just your truth coming up the emotions, the reality that maybe you stuffed down and you didn't realize it was there. So don't be surprised. And it's all good. These should be healing letters and no one has to see them, but you, you can do whatever you want with them. You can hold on to them and read them later, or you can burn them, whatever you want to do. So letters to me, again, the whole purpose is to get you reconnected with yourself. All right. So the next one is, the no wonder statement. You've heard me talk about them before. This is really just a way to validate yourself. Okay. The no wonder statements that I say work wonders for our self esteem because they validate what we think and feel and need and don't want and all that stuff. It's really a way of reparenting yourself, right? So saying things like, okay, well, no wonder I'm mad, or I'm sad, or I'm tired, or I'm afraid, or I'm exhausted, or bored, or scattered, or anxious, or delighted, maybe just content, because put the because in there, take yourself out, put any wonderful person worth their salt in your shoes, would they be upset? Would they be excited? So initially, we may have to compare out a little bit, Because deep down, maybe we don't think we deserve. Maybe they got really messed up for you as a kid. Like, what do you want that for? Or what are you upset about? You have no reason to be upset. You know, all that invalidating stuff that we've talked about in previous episodes. I want you to do the no wonder. No wonder I'm tired. No wonder I'm excited. No wonder I'm anxious. And tell yourself why that makes sense. It doesn't have to be perfectly logical Just do the best you can. The next one is watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I want you to watch your mouth about what you say to yourself. And this is inside your head and out loud and what you write. Some people don't share their self-talk. Sometimes I got to drag it out of clients. And when they admit just how hard they are, then they feel bad about that. I'm like, don't, don't put shame on top of shame, please. If you are hard on yourself and your self-talk is harsh, you have internalized a critical parent that is not your fault. And I encourage you to work on just how you say things. You can't lie to yourself, right? That's not going to work. You can say, all right, I screwed that up, but it's okay. I wasn't intending to. I had no malice in my heart and I can fix this. Watch what you say about other people too, because that can give them a hell of a lot of power. And that just really just keeps them sick, especially in your mind. Okay, so the final way that you can practice working on your self-confidence, and this one I saved the best for last, right? My client the other day looked terrified when I was talking to her about this. She's like, you want me to do what? (laughs) I said, yep, I did it years ago. You got to do it. It's called mirror work. There are people out there that do this specifically. I'm just going to do a little bit of overview on it. So what I mean by mirror work is start with one minute 
and work your way up to five minutes a day for one month. So you are standing in front of the mirror, hopefully in a private space, maybe the bathroom or the bedroom. If it's a full length mirror, that's even better. If you don't have one, use what you can. So you stand there and you're looking at yourself. And I want you to practice smiling, which can seem odd. I want you to peacefully look into your own eyes in the mirror. Accept what you see, whatever you see is there. And some people have told me they never really looked into their reflection. They had so much shame, they just couldn't do it. Like they quickly do their hair and try to look away. Or they would somehow guard their heart to keep them from connecting there, right? I want you to send some love to that person in the mirror. See, it's okay. And I want you to then say three powerful and positive things to yourself. Like you've done good today. Or I am so damn proud of you. Look at you. And you'll be okay. And we'll get there. So three powerful and positive things. This is not a time to be beating yourself up. You are not allowed to do that in the mirror. You hear me? You do that enough the rest of the day. And finally, say three things that you are intending today, or if you're doing this at night, maybe the next morning. Things you are working on changing, that you're getting together, that you're grabbing the courage to face. Just like the letters, you're speaking to you, yourself. All these baby steps matter, folks. They add up. All the things we talked about today may not seem like they can yield big results, but boy, do they over time. If you can think of any other thing that you want to do to work on your confidence, have at it. My hope is that you have some kind of practice that you do And if you fall off the horse, and that's okay, that any moment you can get back on. That's what's really neat. You can do any of these exercises whenever you want to, however often you want to. And if you get busy and you stop, I want you to notice how it feels and then get back on the horse and do some more and and take it, take it as far as you can go. Notice how you feel. Notice how less anxious you might start to feel. Notice how grounded and more peaceful, open, creative, thoughtful, clear-headed, serene. I just want you to practice this. This is a lot of reparenting, right? That if you didn't get growing up, or maybe you did, and then life got hard, we need to do this. We need to take care of ourselves first. We need to be at peace in acceptance of and in charge of who we bring to the table. We need to practice good self-care and how we treat ourselves and how we treat others in our presence. In other words, not giving them power. I want you to become more empowered than you were yesterday. All right, so today we finished up the month on change We finished up the month on change by gathering all the great things you've been learning over the episodes, like self-care, self-talk, and boundaries. It's all about who we bring to the table, like I keep saying, or we simply cannot be confident. You can't outsource your self-confidence. That's a nightmare. And remember, it's the daily footwork that will create the outcome that you want eventually. A person you believe in, that you're proud of, who can see the progress. And the best part is that it feels real because it is real and it's bought and paid for. You spent the time, you committed to the footwork around this. It wasn't handed to you, so you can trust it because you know anything false or fake or easy, quick fix, we don't trust that. But boy, do we trust the day in, day out work that we do on ourselves because it's real and it's solid. And the journey as we did it is so powerful. It's all about creating. All right. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you stay healthy and grounded. Hold on to your hope. Hopefully you can do some of these exercises and hit me up at 
mbaker at soaresmarybaker.com and let me know how you're doing. I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to check the show notes if you want to sign up for the newsletter. If you're already a tribe member, you get that newsletter in your mailbox every Tuesday. And that's where you can listen to the episode if there are any bonus downloads or there and any announcements. All right. So remember, pay it forward. Keep focusing on you. And I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now so you can really own it later.